Lord Jesus, as we open your word and approach you this morning, our hearts are full of thanks because of the opportunity to be able to read your word and has this precious book that guide us through life. And Lord Jesus, we know that you love us and have promised to love us to the very end. You will abide with us and your Holy Spirit will work in such a way that ears have never heard and eyes have never seen. And I pray that this morning you open your word and uh, speak to each one of us. We know that uh, in the world we have to make choices. In this world we have to make many choices each day. But Lord, we don't want to be using our own flesh, our own mind. But at the same time, because we belong to you, we want to really uh, obey and to follow you and to surrender to you, to your will. And so, Lord, touch us, speak to each one of us. Uh, uh, the ears of your servant and your handmaids are open. I pray that you will speak to uh, each of us in our, in our own individual ways, in our different situation. Lord, I, pr I pray that you anoint the mouth and the ears of each one who share and who hear and who sing and who praise you. And this morning would make a difference in our life. This committing ourselves to you, giving you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we make many choices each day. And um, I usually <clears throat> have an outline. And so, yeah, let's see what I can make the outline now. Okay. So th this is um, an outline. Uh, we have prologues, some backgrounds and themes. And then uh, we use two verses, Deuteronomy chapter 30, 19 to 20. Actually, we need to read the whole book, a uh, whole, whole chapter of Deuteronomy chapter 30. 30 but we only, uh, because it's rather long, 20 verses, so uh, we just uh, use the last two verses. And then uh, making the right choice, choices, and then surrendering. Uh, this is uh, a five-point uh, sermon, okay? Now, uh, the Lord has given to each one of us different, uh, different experience. And uh, so I first want to use the experience of someone, uh, an organization that I know personally. Now, you say, well, the Northwest Spiritual Band, Sibei Ling Gong Tuan, Sai Bak Ling Gong Tuan, is basically a very old and already banned. And I'm, I'm only 75. They started in 1940. How come you know them? And I'll share with you the, 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 the amazing story of how I get to know some of the members of the founders of the uh, Northwest Spiritual Band. Now, okay. In the early 40s, out of Shandong Peninsula, there is um, a group of people, they call themselves Jesus Family. Have you guys have heard about the Jesus Family? Yes, yes, And many of the important um, uh, ministry people really came out of that band. And uh, it is called the Jesus Family. And uh, uh, the Chinese government, the communists, uh, really hate them in many ways because they they share everything together. They truly live what the early church have practiced. And uh, they sacrificially share each other's life. And they meet together and they break the bread every time they meet and there are many stories about this Jesus family. And, um, and out of the, this area of Shandong, revival came, and it's called the Shandong Revival. And out of that, Reverend uh, uh, Yu Ligong, okay, Moses Yu, uh, out of that, Reverend Tang Jinghui, uh, quite a number 
of the leaders, former leaders of the Chinese church came out or came to Christ through the ministry of the people who came out of the Shandong revival. And so in Shandong, there are many unique ministry. I was there many, many times. I was just there uh, in October, just uh, past October, and uh, uh, quietly go through uh, the small and big towns, and finally uh, in Jinan, the capital, and flow out from uh, Jinan back to Hong Kong. And um, and it is a faith mission, the Jesus family is a faith mission, but uh, there is also a spiritual mission called Northwest Spiritual Band or Northwest Spiritual Fellowship. And it was started by a Jiang Guquan, a Jiang Guquan. And uh, they, uh, just like Jesus' family, they have uh, everything in common. They depend totally upon the Lord. But their vision is to bring the gospel to the minority race, the ethnic groups in Northwest China. And many of them end up in Xinjiang. And they uh, have no funding. They totally depend on the Lord. They have no what we call so-called fundraising of today. They have no grandmanship of today. They kept traveling. When they were young, they dedicated their lives and the Holy Spirit moved and they said goodbye to the friends and to their relatives most of them single, some of them married, very few of them, and they pull a cart and put all their belongings in the cart and just move and just walk. If they have families, they put the families on cart, horse-driven carts, but most of them just walk all the way to Xinjiang. They couldn't afford the train ticket, but everywhere they go, they just say Jesus. And there are quite a number of people who left, but out of the very original, there are basically this group of uh, five, six people. Okay, Jiao Ximen. I don't know whether any of you know the name Jiao Ximen, Jiang Xihuan, Jiang Xiyan, Ma Ho, or Jiu Ma Ho, Jiu Ma Ga, Bin Wan Bo. Have you heard of any of those guys? No, you should. Okay, these are amazing history of China. And I can give you story of each one. Actually, the first one, Zhao Ximen, he ended up in Xinjiang and he shared Jesus in Xinjiang. I was in Xinjiang since 1980. The door just opened up and I arrived in Urumqi, Urumqi. And when I arrived, I felt the whole spirit in me, but I was totally oppressed by another spirit. Just when I landed, I was oppressed. And I don't know why. I just prayed and so many things happened. And I was almost kicked out. The doors is open. At that time, there's only one hotel that can take foreigners and foreign Chinese. I can't stay in any hotel. I book a hotel. And in the middle of the night, they kicked me because the police came and said, no, you can't accept foreign Chinese. So they kicked me to another hotel, which can take foreign Chinese. There's only one in the whole city of Yeramji, 1980. And that's uh, August. And when I arrive in the hotel, there is no room in the inn. I was standing there begging to, them to give me a room because Outside is freezing cold, freezing in Yeramji, even in, in, in August. And uh, and they uh, have nowhere to go. And finally, they gave me a room out of pity. And then at the middle of the night, around two o'clock, there was a knock on the door. I was barely in my pajamas wanting to, 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 to rest. And I opened the door because there's no people. I opened the door and there a lake just stepped in and would not let me close the door. It was the local police. Amazing story, but uh, I won't say too much, but I can see some of the churches started by Zhao Ximen, by 
張思欢，張思欣的張思欢嚇，張石煥，張石欣啊 ，brother and sister。Okay, and、uh, I can see the churches that started by them. Zhao Ximen end up arrested and end up in hot labor camp in a chemical factory right next to a salty lake,、uh, just like Salt Lake City.、Uh, they are big, vast, salty lake, and they extract chemical from the salt. But anyway,、uh, but he was finally released in the nineteen sixties. And he went back to,、uh, to Tianjin. That's where he was, and he passed away there.、Um, and so、uh, there are a lot of amazing story.、Uh, the second person is called、uh, is called Zhang Xihuan. Zhao Ximen、uh, has a has a、um, uh, has many poems. When they were walking with all the belongings. They sing and they write poems. Then still, you we are using today. I was very young Christian at twenty one, and I hear those hymns. I couldn't believe it because those hymns is full of the spirit and just prick at my heart. Have you heard of, heard of a hymn called "Hyang Chin Jiao Ah"? He, 向前走呀，努力向前走。一去不回头，向前走呀，努力向前走，前进不回头。手拉着你往后看的人，不配金山国。Yeah, have you heard of the hymn? This written by this guy, Jiang Xihuan, the second guy. I get to know him. He's still in New York now, but he was walking with all his belonging in this cart, and he wrote to him using Luke nine fifty two. Those who have his hand on the plow and look back is not fit for the kingdom. Amazing him that really stirred my heart when I was a young Christian at twenty one. His sister Jiang Xian、uh, is now in New Orleans, but they are very, very old now, and many of them already passed away.、Um, you can see the name is very, very unique. You know, they were they weren't called Jiao Ximen, the first guy. Basically, is the West Gate, Jiao. Can you see Jiao Jiu Sai Mun? Ah, it really means Jiao of the West Gate. Because each of one, each of which one of them changed the name because of vision to bring the gospel to the Muslim through the West Gate of China, which is Xinjiang and Yunnan and all these places, and so Zhao changed his name to Zhao Ximen, Zhao of the West Gate, and then Jiang changed his name to Jiang Xiwan because it's a calling from Zion. So they want to bring the gospel back to Jerusalem through the Muslim land. Jiang Xian means there's a grace. Jiang Xian, ah, grace from Zion. Marke, of course, is is a biblical name. My Jia means you know Saudi Arabia, Mecca of Saudi Arabia, and that's where the 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 most important、uh, temple of uh, of uh, of Islam. And he want to share Jesus with the with the Muslim. And the last one that you see the name Ben Yunbo, have you heard of him? He wrote a very famous poem called "Hin Kap Mo Ming A Chun Dou Jie." You 没听过 Have you heard of this set of poems? Amazing poems. I gave up all those.、Uh, I give it to the student at Biola and at Wheaton. So I didn't. I did not find any more copies here. In my home, but、uh, Ben Yunbo, because there is at the Ben is his last name, so it's the Ben Jiang is the the border. There are row of cloud after rows of cloud that row towards Jerusalem,、uh, wave after wave of cloud of witnesses that go towards Jerusalem. Ben Yunbo wrote that famous hymn. 
and this use. I, when I first read it as a young Christian at 21, I was so captivated about how they make choices, how they surrender their lives, how they decorate themselves. Ben Yinbo actually came with his wife, Miss Bai, after he came out of jail and the communists just kicked them out. So they came to Detroit and he was a loving husband and, and spent time with his wife until his wife died in 2001. I was still in Wheaton. And um, so we served together. Amazing older person. I was at that time in my uh, 30s, almost 40. And I was serving with someone who is uh, Biwak, a pillar of faith. And I just thanked the Lord for getting to know them. And uh, there are things that we have done that I cannot share here, but uh, very unique. Um, but uh, uh, we share with the, with the U.S. Senate very quietly and so on and so forth without de detailing it for you. Uh, so finally, he died in 2018, 70, 17 years after his wife died. Then the Lord gave him total freedom. So he preached all over America, Canada, oh, everywhere. And uh, used by a lot in a mighty way, still in his old age. Now go back to number two, Jiang Si Huan. Uh, I originally didn't know him. But uh, I have a student at Moody that was barely just accepted and uh, my wife and I sponsor her, and um, she was supposed to come. And uh, uh, the Holy Spirit worked in such a way that we felt that uh, we were felt led to help and so involve. And Moody is a very good school, Moody Bible Institute. And his uh, father is a co-worker of Song Sangjie, as John Song, Dr. John Song. His father, uh, is the manager of the Anden Yuan, the Grace, the the the, the, the Institute of Grace, Anden Yuan, uh, which is a Bible uh, 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 conference uh, in, in outside of Beijing, in Xiangshan, in Fragrance Hill near Beijing. So this young girl, we get to know her and her parents, and decided. Uh, to get uh, Moody accepted uh, her. And then school starts September the 1st. And uh, we didn't hear a word for two months. It was very strange. So I wrote to her in an email that was almost 30 years ago. I wrote to her in the email uh, and I said, you know, school will be starting in just a week. Where are you? And then uh, the girl said, I am in New York. And uh, I don't feel uh, too well. Uh, I want to apply uh, to stay in New York for next semester, and then I will come uh, in spring. I said, you know, spring is a bad time because, you know, uh, many courses are offered in the fall, and in the spring they offered, uh, you know, another course, and the prerequisite is the one that offered in the fall. So if you miss the fall, you miss the spring automatically. I said, that's why all the school, most of the school, smaller school, they usually start their students uh, in, in the fall. And so I was praying and the spirit just said something's wrong. So I called some pastor in New York and found that this girl came to America and get married in just that one week and get married. So she was using the acceptance at Moody and was trying to hide and get married to someone whom she know 10 years ago, already in New York working. And she and the parents without informing us uh, or Moody and went there and get married and still want to go to Moody. And so finally, 
I wrote to her and I said, I know the boy. Your boy have changed a lot. And now into all sorts of vices, you see that. You haven't, you cheated. You think that you cheated your school, you cheated, you think the Lord, but you are cheated yourself. You have cheated yourself. And she found out that, that the man whom she know 10 years ago is now in all sorts of vices. And now she, and then she wanted to divorce him. And that's how sad it was. So finally, they cannot go to, they, she wanted to bring the, the boy, but boy is not even a Christian now. And so she cannot bring the boy to Moody because Moody required husband and wife to go there together at that time. So one day I got a call from a man and I don't know him from Adam. It's called, my name is Jiang. I said, Mr. Jiang, what can I do for you? He said that I was at the church. I was playing the piano after church and everybody was gone. The door was locked. I was playing the piano and singing him to myself. I heard a girl at the faraway room crying. So I went over and talked with her and found that she has this mistake that she has done. I'm calling you to see if you can still allow her to go to Moody. And this man is Jiang Xihuan. Never knew him before. So he said, I've written that hymn called Heng Qin Zhao, ah, Heng Qin Zhao. And I've written 40 more hymns. And uh, I want to send it to you for your enjoyment. Those hymns are not even published. Amazing hymns too. But um, make a long story short, uh, these people, Zhao Ximen, Jiang Xihuan, all the way to Ben Yunbo, they make choices when they're young and they never look back. They yield their life totally to the Lord and live from hand to mouth and depend upon the Lord. They work along the way and get enough to eat and very, you know, uh, bare minimal expenses and serve the Lord and bring many to the Lord. I was actually in Yunnan province and there in the mountain. You have to walk around five hours before you arrive at the church. Walk five hours all through the mountain. And there in the minority, male people, there's no language. They just have spoken language, no written language. And the, the woman sit on one side and the men sit on one side, all dressed in white. All dressed in white. Here's the hymn book. I just have a copy, and you can see that those are universal language. They made language for them and bring them the him the, the 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 written Bible and so on. So this is how old this book is. We have many of this type of uh, manuscript that's very unique, and so I saw the church started by Ben Yunbo, not knowing that 20 some years later, I met him. And then his wife died and we were able to share Jesus uh, along with him together in many places. Okay, now, and this is exactly how I feel. How beautiful upon the mountain, the feet of him who brings good news, who publish peace and bring good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to, to Zion, your God reigns. So there are many stories that we experience each day of life. We make choices in each day of our life. And these people make choices and surround themselves and make an impact for the gospel of the Lord in China. We have a college students who just want to buy a car. And we have a Biola student. And my wife and I have a policy that they contract with their parents that they would not drive or date. That's, that's their, their, their contract with their parents. They would not date. They uh, would study hard. Their grade point have to be a certain level and so on. 
and uh, they will not drive until they go to graduate school because of insurance, because of cost, because of danger. And, you know, China usually have only one child. And so the, and many people get hurt or, you know, uh, cannot afford the insurance and so on. And so one day, just several months ago, a college student called my wife and I and said, you know, because there's the church they're going to is Evangelical Free Church in Brea, California, and there's just no one picking them up. And so he said, uh, Dr. and Mrs. Chung, can we buy a car? Can I buy a car? I said, how can you afford it? I know your finance. I know how, uh, you know, you, you, are, you are faring financially. You're a good student. But there's that policy that student, uh, you know, undergrad is not supposed to drive. But then my wife suddenly said, well, you know, they need to go to church on Sunday and there are five or six students that need to jam in the car uh, to go, but there's no car. So he said, well, why don't we let him buy? I said, no, that's the policy. And then, but we, we can pray, isn't it? So we prayed, that's a few months ago, we prayed. And suddenly, through many, many different stories, someone from China called and said, I have an old car that I have to give up. Uh, I want to give it to you. I said, no, no, how much it costs? He said, uh, it will be a $5,000, but it's free. I said, no, no, no. We, we, uh, my wife wants to buy a car for this guy and uh, we'll pay. Uh, he said, no, 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 I'll give it to the Lord. And I said, well, it's up to you. But you know, he said, well, no, I'm not giving to you. I'm giving to the Lord. So he, as, he, as this guy from China said, he wanted to give it to the Lord. You can't refuse it because it's giving to the Lord. You can't say, no, sorry, you can't give it to the Lord. So we accept it for the students. So there we already see that God already working. So this student have did not even have a driving license. He already have a car. So I said, Ben, I don't know how 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 long would he be able to get his license? In just one week of studying the 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 um the, the driving test manual, he passed the written test. One time he said went there to have a driver uh, test, he passed. So I said, Lord, okay, you prove yourself, and I I cannot post. There is the car, and there uh, is this student who will be driving. Now he's using the car for the Lord. So you know, he makes we make choices a lot of times. Okay. Now going to the second point. Uh, background and themes. Okay. Uh, Now we are going to read two verses of the book of Deuteronomy, not yet, but uh, I want to give you a little bit of the background before we read it, then you would be able to absorb it much better. Uh, Deuteronomy, just like uh, Leviticus, are two unique books independent. The first five books of the, of the Bible, written by Moses. If you look at the book of Deuteronomy, okay, the Deuteronomy is basically has two Greek words, deutero and nomos. And basically deutero means second or the other one, the second or the uh, the copy. And then nomos is the Greek word for law. Okay, so basically God have given to Moses the 10 commandments and the law of the land and for his people. Then he repeated it in Deuteronomy. And that's why Deuteronomy is a repeating of the laws of the Lord in detail. Okay, but it was a unique book, just like Leviticus. It is given entirely at one location. They are not, they are about to enter Canaan, the promised land, which is flowing with milk and honey. But you know, they are really, it is shared and propagated and shared in just one location. And it's almost throughout a month, and uh, the book is there shared. Okay, now, so it is very, very unique book, and so it is uh, the same way why, you know, uh, we ask the same question. 
Why was Moses forbidden by God to enter Canaan? He just made one wrong decision. One. And that is an important decision. And this decision basically, can you see the second screen? Yes. Numbers 27 to 8a. And let me read to you. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take the staff and assemble the congregation and tell the rock before their eyes. You see the highlight of the word tell, the rock before their eyes to yield this water. So you shall bring water out of the rock from them and give drink to the congregation and their cattle. So it's very clearly in num number chapter 20, verse 7 to verse 8a, the Lord instructed Moses because his people are uh, uh, complaining to Moses and to God that they are thirsty and they would rather live a life of slavery in Egypt than walk through the deserts and the wilderness and with the hardship. And so God told Moses to be at the rock and tell the rock before their eyes, instruct the rock. And so just a, word, a verse later it says, Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice and water came out abundantly and the congregation drank. And the Lord said to Moses, because you did not believe in me to uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. Just because instead of instructing, commanding the rock, he hit the rock twice. Well, what's the big deal about hitting the rock? Similar case. At the place, both places, they call Maribah. The reason why they go call Maribah, because they rebel against the Lord. Esau the 17, just before that, at the beginning, of their trip in the you know in in the wilderness, and this is how he story was recorded. But the people thirsted, grumbled against Moses, and the Lord said to Moses, "Pass on before the people. Take in your hand the staff. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, later of course called Maribah because of the rebellion, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it." and the people will drink. Moses did so. Moses in Exodus struck the rock one time and water came out. But then by instruction, second time, God told him to instruct the rock or to tell the rock or to command the rock. He struck the rock twice instead of telling the rock. Now why is it so important that you struck the rock and all this? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 4. And all ate the same spiritual food. We all, we, we are Christians now. We all the same spiritual food. We drank from the same spiritual drink. And they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. So you understand when Paul was trying to explain to the Christians in Corinth that we are standing on the rock. We are have a rock beside us, that he is the shadow of the rock in, 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 in the bright, shining sun. This, we are hiding in the shadow of the rock. The rock is a type of Jesus. And Jesus only struck one time, and he died, but never struck again. So because it's a type of Christ, so God instructed Moses to touch the rock only one time, struck him only one time, but not the second time. And therefore, he was severely punished because of a decision and a choice that he made out of the anger of his own people. And, you know, you can't find a guy more patient than Moses just because of one 
anger and lousy decision. He was forbidden to enter. Let's look at Joshua chapter 5, verse 6a. For the people of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness until all nations and the men of war came of Egypt perished because they did not obey the voice of the Lord. You can see that the whole, they are 40 years in the desert, in the wilderness, Mount Sinai mainly. And and Sinai Desert, mainly. And 40 years, they go around and repeating some of the grumbling. God would not allow that generation to enter into the promised land. And even the leader, Moses, wasn't able to. And so Deuteronomy is the last testament from Moses to whole new generation. The new generation are those who are literally born. 40 years later, these people are born in the wilderness and they are able to go in. But Moses warned them and loved them and instructed them before he, they enter. But he himself can only go up on the Mount Nebo, Mount Nebo on the top. On, and that is... Deuteronomy chapter 34 on Mount Nebo, he was able to see far away the land God had promised him and the Israelite, but he would not be able to get in. And so you have this background now. So God is speaking to a new generation what they should behave, how they have to depend upon the Lord. Now we, look, we go into the, with that background, let's go into Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 and 20. Okay, now, uh, let me show you how, uh, this is the sheet that I printed, but you weren't, you're not able to see this whole. I printed just these two verses in NASB, ESV, Amplified Bible, the message, the New Living Translation. So I can only show you two because of the, of the, of the time we have. And so let's just read to you. Can you see this in ESV? English Standard Version, ESV. Can you see this? Yes. yes. But, all right, let me read. 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. Verse 20, loving the Lord your God, obey his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days. And that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. All right. Now, this is ESV. If you go back to verse 19, you can see I highlighted, excuse me. Well, I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay, I highlighted the word choose. Today's topic, making a choice. You say, well, in these two verses, you can see just one word choose. It's true. But when you start reading several versions of the Bible, you suddenly realize that the translator now suddenly that, oh, what the Lord is speaking is really in these two verses is the word choice. So let me give you new living translation, NLT. Now you can see the word choice or choose. choose. In verse 19, in ESL, there's only one choose, okay? Today I've given you the choice between life and death, between blessing and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendant might live. Next verse. You can now, you can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obey him and committing yourself firmly to him. This or he is the key to your life. And if you love and will obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestor, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Brother and sister, can you see the word choice in these two verse? A total of four times. 
just in one verse 19, there are three times. So suddenly I realized the word choice is really what the Lord is speaking to me. And so this is the reason of this topic called making choice using these two verses. Now, so we make choices, make many choices. And so, uh, but making the right choice is the key. How do you make the right choice? These are screening from these verses. Learn from the past. Recognize who rules and overrules. Recognize the one-sided covenant. I will try to explain to you. The key is heart circumcision. It is the matter of the heart. Always choose life. Five sub-points out of these five points of the sermon. Out of the point number four, making the right choice. You learn from the past. You recognize who rules and overrules. You recognize the one-sided covenant. And the key is heart circumcision. It's a matter of the heart. Now, go back to the verse, uh, even in the... Uh, excuse me. Okay, in NLT. You can see the word choice again four times. And then out of that, suddenly... Derek, Pastor Derek says, the key is heart circumcision. Where do you see that? If you read the whole chapter of, you know, uh, chapter 30, you can see that particular word. This is chapter 30. And you can see that I highlight the word that are in there. And they are repeating and repeating. So, let me first said, let's learn from the past. Okay. All right. So, so if you go just to a, to a chapter before that, which you don't need to, to find it now because I'm, uh, it's on your screen. Can you see Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 5 to 6? I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you and your sandals have not worn off your fit, feet. You have not eaten bread and you have not drunk, drunk wine or strong drink, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. God has provided manna from heaven, provided water when they need it, provided meat that they needed every day. And for the years, the clothes never worn, worn, worn out, and the sandals never worn off from the feet. That's amazing. I hope that I know what they're made of. Uh, it's definitely... Definitely uh, not plastic, I hope. But you know, that's amazing how the Lord has blessed them. So the, the young generation and the older generation all have experienced. They learn from the past of 40 years in the wilderness how God have really provided for them and have protected from them. They win wars that they never can, 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 can dream. Okay? Now, you learn from the past. Look at the Exodus. Chapter uh, the second book, you know, chapter 19. You yourself have seen that what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on the eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all people, for all the earth is mine. So they are they are the past that we all learn. How God has protected us and have sustained us. And those are important to make the decision. Then you recognize who, not the big show, not what hell, hell was, who is the person with a capital P who rules and overrules. Now, if you go to ch chapter 30, not just 19 and 20, verse 19 and 20, if you go to chapter 30 and then you go to verse 1, Verse 2, twice in, in verse 3, verse 4, verse 5, twice in verse 6, verse 7, verse 8, twice in verse 9, twice in verse 10, three times in verse 16, and twice in verse 20. The, the word, the Lord your God, or the Lord came out all this area. Look at this. 
yellow in the in yellow. I just highlight yellow on all these verses. You can see in just two verses, he repeated, I am the Lord your God. The Lord, the Lord my God. Basically, he repeated all this in these two verses more than 20 times the name of the person whom we suppose to surrender and to obey. And the word obey is in green. Okay? Five times in just two verses. Okay? And so uh, in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 30. And so right here you can see that God is trying to tell them Yes, I'm telling you what to do. I said before you, life and death, blessing and curse, choose ye life. Yes, but because he is the person who rules, he's sovereign, he's our Lord, and he overrules. Whatever we decide, we better make the choice that is going to the Lord. Make choices that he has willed and is ordained. It's according to his word. So we recognize he is indeed the Lord. Now don't call me Lord, Lord, and doeth not the things that I say. That's what the Lord says. And when you call him Lord, 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 and really call him Lord. Now, and then number C, recognize the one side the covenant. You know, the covenant in the Old Testament has always been that simple. You do your part of the bargain or the covenant. The Lord said, I will do my part of the bargain. That's the Old Testament. It's the Old Covenant. It's always you do something and I will perform. And God swore to himself. And he will recognize, totally swore to himself. Look at Genesis chapter 17. It's the first Abrahamic. It's the first covenant called Abrahamic covenant. Some people say there's Noah, Noah's covenant. There's Adamic covenant. But really, the one that is the, the big covenant is with, with, with uh, Abraham. And Genesis 17, verse 6, verse 8, the verse 10 said, and I, I accept it here. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make you into nations. I'll give you and your offspring all the land of Canaan for an, an, last, for an everlasting possession. I'll be their God. This is my covenant, which you shall keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. Their requirement. God said, you need to be circumcised. Now I choose these words. They are, they are, if you choose chapter 15, chapter 12, they are the same Abraham covenant. Always is two-sided. That means God requires you to do something and I will bless you and I commit to you on those. It's two-sided. But you really now have to recognize the new covenant is different. It's all one-sided. So one-sided and two-sided. Old Testament, it says God, Genesis chapter 17, you can see that just one small verse in, chapter, in verse 10. Every male among you shall be circumcised. That's just pinpoint this one verse you can see why I use that okay now we're jumping the key is heart circumcision so I use the that verse with circumcision now I go into heart circumcision Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 now we did not read that verse now is the first time in chapter 30 same chapter that we read ESV and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart. Wow. Circumcision really is a symbol of heart circumcision. Yes, circumcision of the foreskin is just basically a symbol or a type of a circumcision that the Lord is going to perform in your heart. Everyone, male or female, need the heart circumcision. And he said, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring. So that, because of that, 
you can do this. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and that you may live. You can see it repeating in chapter 30. This is all your heart in, in blue. All your hearts and all your souls and all your mind. This is the word heart and your soul in, in many times. So he was emphasizing Moses before he died, facing new generation, facing almost at the very step of entering into Canaan. He warned the people that your heart needs to be circumcised. Wow. He said you obey. You say that you would uh, you 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 would worship. Yes, you said that uh, you would uh, follow him, but God said the way to do it is a new heart, circumcised heart. Okay, so let me read you Ezekiel, chapter thirty-six, verse twenty-six to twenty-seven, and I will give you a new heart. And a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh. Give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And be careful to obey my rules. Now you can see. God is telling the people. The Old Testament won't work. It is basically. It's a sign that there's a new one to come. And the old generation. The Israelites, they just have to believe Jesus. Now, to believe God, have faith in God. But the New Testament requires to have faith in Jesus Christ who died for us. And if we accept Jesus Christ and our heart will be circumcised, he's going to give us a new heart and a new spirit. That's see, you can see that's in Ezekiel. There is the New Testament in the Old Testament. The whole Old Testament is really talking about Jesus also. So th you, th there's a reason why I choose the, the verse, even though it's one-sided you know, covenant in the new and two-sided covenant in the old. Now, you can see it's a matter of the heart. I just share with you verse 2, verse 6, and all this talking about love your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, above all else, Guard your heart, for it's a wellspring of life. Our heart has to be offered to the Lord daily. Okay. Making the right choice. Always choose life. Choose blessing and choose the good. And that's Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 and verse 19. And uh, there are many testimonies which I don't have time to share. And so let's forget the testimony. So wow. saving life is more important than your daily life. If you're having dinner, and someone calls you and said, I'm sick in the hospital. And I really want to see you because I want to know your Jesus. I will put down my bowl of rice and leave my family and go to the hospital. Because saving life, choosing life is more important than anything. God wants his church to share Jesus, to share life. So I said before you, life and death, blessing and curse. Go verse 15, verse 19. Choose life. That's what the Lord is telling us. Choose life. And when you choose life, you have to be surrendering. Because you have so much requirement before you. There are so much choices. But you surrender, Lord. Being a Christian, we just sang the hymn. I just remember singing the hymn. I surrender all. Let me say this. When I was singing the hymn, am I truly singing that hymn, to sing hallelujah is much easier. You need grace. You need more grace to sing I surrender all. We just send the hymn. In my heart I say, Lord, when I surrender all, it takes the full power of grace. Because there is always that small area in our life that we refuse to give up. Whether it's money, whether it is your flesh, where there's uh, for enjoyment of life, there's always a small area. You refuse to give up. God said, I surrender all. And that's how we need grace. Being a Christian, calling him my Lord and my God, demands surrender to him. If not, I'm a contradiction. 
God has enabled us to overcome the devil, the world, and the and our flesh by the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit and a heart circumcised by God. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, your word is indeed like a two-edged sword as it is presented before us. There's no if and buts. It's a matter of when we are willing and allowing to take over our lives and be indeed Lord and be indeed God. As a Lord, I pray that you brand the word of the Lord into our hearts and pray that the Holy Spirit will perform the circumcision, the changing of the heart, that turning around of the heart, that we can totally dedicate our lives, even as how advanced in age that, uh, that we are, Lord, we want to commit even the last hours and last days and last months and last years of our life to you, that when we see you, that you honor us with the word good and faithful servants. And so, Lord, Lord, I, I, I just commit and command my brothers and sisters in Hayward to you. And I pray that uh, you will work in them the way that you work in me and work in many people that we have testified of your goodness today. We think of uh, those who have uh, gone before us and now sitting with Jesus at the bosom of Jesus, really resting. You have given us the same choice. He said, come, come and take this living water freely. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us to approach you and dedicate our lives totally. There, surrender our lives totally to you. Committing ourselves to you this way, we ask the Spirit will continue working as a deep Give us a double portion of the Spirit this day. This we pray now. In Jesus' name. Amen.